In the 1960s, computers didn't fit in pockets. They filled rooms, glowed with vacuum tubes, and whispered in binary. Yet with less power than a modern calculator, four small machines guided the greatest journey in human history, the voyage to the moon. Each of these computers had a single purpose. Each was built by a different team, and each was absolutely vital. One lived inside the mighty Saturn V, flying the rocket from the pad to orbit. Two were aboard the spacecraft, one in the command module, one in the lunar module. And deep inside the lunar module, a fourth computer stood ready, silent, waiting. Its only purpose to save the astronauts' lives if everything else failed. These were the four onboard computers that made the Apollo lunar missions possible. High above the ground, between the third stage of the Saturn V and the spacecraft, was a slender white ring, the instrument unit. Inside that ring lived the Launch Vehicle Digital Computer, or LVDC. Built by IBM's Federal Systems Division in Huntsville, Alabama, the LVDC was the autopilot of the Saturn V. It read data from a stable platform of gyroscopes and accelerometers, and from those signals, it controlled every steering motion of the rocket, pitch, yaw, and roll, from liftoff to orbit and beyond. When the F-1 engines roared to life and seven and a half million pounds of thrust shook the cape, the LVDC immediately began correcting for roll and wind shear. It could process about 12,000 instructions every second, continuously adjusting the gimbals of the engines by fractions of a degree. Its most important feature wasn't speed, it was reliability. The LVDC was triple modular redundant, three computers running in perfect unison, voting on every result. If one circuit disagreed, it was outvoted and ignored. This design meant that no single failure could bring the rocket down. From the instant of ignition to Earth orbit insertion and through the translunar injection burn that sent Apollo toward the moon, the LVDC was the silent pilot of the Saturn V. When the third stage finally shut down, its job was done. The spacecraft was free, coasting toward the moon, and the rocket's brain could rest. Once the Saturn V's job was complete, control passed to a new kind of computer, smaller, faster, and far more personal. Inside the command module, a compact gray box with glowing green numbers became the astronaut's most trusted companion, the Apollo Guidance Computer, or AGC. Developed at the MIT Instrumentation Laboratory, the AGC was the world's first fully digital flight computer. It weighed just 70 pounds and ran on integrated circuits, technology that was cutting edge in the early 1960s. Its memory was tiny by modern standards, about two kilobytes of erasable storage and 36 kilobytes of read-only core rope memory woven by hand. Every wire in those memory ropes represented a single bit of code, a one or a zero, 
physically threaded by skilled technicians, many of them women, whose precision determined whether the computer would live or die. Astronauts communicated with the AGC through the DISCI, short for display and keyboard. Instead of words, they entered commands as pairs of numbers, a verb for the action and a noun for the data. This simple system let them control navigation, propulsion, and even re-entry, all with a few keystrokes. The AGC in the command module handled guidance, navigation, and control for the spacecraft during coasting flight, mid-course corrections, lunar orbit insertion, and the dangerous return to Earth. It was, quite literally, the ship's mind, calculating their path home long before they ever left it. While the command module's AGC was built to guide a ship through the void, another nearly identical computer lived in the lunar module, designed for something entirely different, landing on another world. This second AGC controlled the LM's primary guidance, navigation, and control system, or PGNCS. It managed the spacecraft's complex descent from lunar orbit, its landing on the surface, and its ascent to rejoin the command module. During the landing of Apollo 11, it became one of the most famous computers in history. As the lunar module Eagle descended toward the moon, alarms began flashing, 1201 and 1202. To the astronauts, it was a mystery. To the flight controllers in Houston, it was nearly panic. But within seconds, they realized the computer was not failing, it was succeeding. The AGC software written by Margaret Hamilton's team at MIT was overloaded with radar data, but it had been programmed to prioritize. It calmly dropped the least important tasks and kept processing the critical ones, the calculations that kept the spacecraft stable and descending safely. That design decision, made years earlier, allowed Apollo 11 to continue its landing. When Armstrong finally called, Houston, tranquility base here, the Eagle has landed. The AGC was still running flawlessly, a quiet partner that had just made history. But the lunar module carried something else, a fourth computer known as the Abort Guidance System, or AGS. This machine was completely independent of the main AGC and existed for one purpose only, survival. The AGS was the lunar module's emergency backup. If the primary guidance computer failed during descent, ascent, or rendezvous, the AGS could take over and guide the spacecraft to safety. It wasn't as precise, and it didn't have the same navigation accuracy, but it could get the crew off the moon and back into lunar orbit, and that was all it needed to do. Developed by TRW, the AGS operated on a simpler design philosophy, ruggedness, speed, and reliability. It used its own inertial sensors and its own software completely isolated from the primary system. If the main computer went dark, the AGS would awaken, ready to take command. Fortunately, it was never needed in a real emergency, but its very presence gave every Apollo crew the confidence that even if the unimaginable happened, they had one last line of defense. Even with four computers on board, Apollo's greatest strength came from Earth itself. 
from the vast mainframes that filled rooms at NASA's Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas. This was the real-time computer complex, a network of IBM System 360 mainframes that processed an ocean of data every second. These ground-based computers were, by far, the most powerful in the entire Apollo system. They received continuous telemetry from the spacecraft, compared it with predicted trajectories, and recalculated new flight paths in real time. They were the primary source of navigation, constantly verifying and updating the spacecraft's onboard computations. If the astronauts' computers made an error, Houston would catch it. If the trajectory drifted by even a few feet per second, the real-time computer complex would compute an exact correction and send the numbers to the crew to be entered manually into the AGC. In effect, these machines were the mission's safety net, the unseen intellect watching from Earth ensuring no deviation went unnoticed. Together, these systems, the LVDC, the AGCs in the Command and Lunar Modules, the AGS, and the massive IBM computers on Earth, formed an interconnected web of intelligence stretching from the launch pad to the moon. Each had its own role. Each was indispensable. The LVDC launched the rocket and flew it perfectly into orbit. The command module AGC navigated through space and brought the crew home. The lunar module AGC landed humanity on another world. The abort guidance system waited in silence, ready to save them all. And on the ground, the real-time computer complex served as Mission Control's omnipresent mind, checking, predicting, and guiding every move. They didn't share code or architecture, they didn't even run at the same clock speed. Yet they worked together in perfect harmony their combined precision, guiding fragile humans through the most dangerous journey ever attempted. These computers didn't have touchscreens or color graphics. They didn't use silicon chips or high-speed networks. But they embodied something timeless. The power of human engineering, discipline, and imagination. When Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin stepped onto the moon, they carried the work of thousands of minds. IBM's engineers in Huntsville, MIT's programmers in Cambridge, TRW's designers in California, and the quiet giants at Mission Control in Houston. Four computers, four distinct minds, one shared purpose to take humanity farther than it had ever gone and bring it safely home.